Would you look at the time? It is time for another video. Good day to you, my fellow adventurers throughout time and space. It is as I, the Cowardly Time Lord, welcoming you to another LEGO review. This one's a really good one because it's a comparison review between the T-6 Jedi Shuttle and Ahsoka Tano's Jedi Shuttle. <clears throat> well, let's start off with one big problem. This, the Ahsoka Tano's one, does not have a good sensor of balance and tips over rather easily. Whereas the old T-6 Jedi Shuttle... You really need to force that thing to fall over. Meanwhile, it just falls down. Go boom. Uh, play features. Flick fire missiles versus stud launches. Say what you will about flick fire missiles and they're not always the best working possibilities. Stud shooters are still stud shooters and you can't get around that. Overall appearance. I'm going to have to give it to the old T-6 Jedi Shuttle. Landing gear. Going to have to give it to the old T-6 Jedi Shuttle. Overall stability. And the turning mechanism. Yes, those are together in my mind. So, yeah, it just flippy floppies all over the place. This one, you actually need to turn the wings. There's quite a bit of resistance to you turning the wings in a good way. And it isn't just the age and the creaking of the set that causes it to be like that. In terms of it actually being a shuttle... So Katana's wins out because it's actually got a storage area compared to this one, which just has engine area. Speaking of which, let's look at these engines, shall we? <clears throat> there they are. And there is a So Katana's one. <sighs> I like the little ball turret, which is accurate to the show. And yes, so that means that this T6 Jedi shuttle could have used an extra two engines on it. To make it look proper. I suppose. I just don't think that the storage area on Ahsoka's T6 Jedi shuttle is enough. Because you can't actually fit a minifigure in there. You can barely fit anything at all in there. It's mostly just for putting in lightsabers and carrying Hu Yang's backpack. And then let's get on to the cockpit. <laughs> so both cockpits easily detach. I cannot show you this as I'm doing these video I always do these videos one handed because one hand has to hold my camera but this one has a very roomy cockpit that you can fit multiple figures in whereas this one you can only fit a single figure in they both come with Tagruta figures being a Sokotano and Shock T, the only Lego set so far to come with Master Shock T. As you can see, her Leku have started to fade just slightly, as is the case of aging. I still think mine looks in pretty good condition, though, all things considered, versus Ahsoka Tano's new Leku. It's an interesting new mold that they created for this new set, I must say. Um, the Ahsoka Tano figure is, of course, extremely detailed, which is good. Also, I cannot confirm, basically, that any of these figures are the original version that came with my T-6 Jedi Shuttle. In fact, I can 
basically confirm that the Anakin and the Obi-Wan are not from the T6 Jedi shuttle, but they are the same version of the figure. I double and triple check that fact. So, yeah. And I've added capes, because adding capes, always a good idea. Yes. Um... And then, of course, we've we've officially received um, Seisin Tin in three different Star Wars sets. His Starfighter, the T-6 Jedi Shuttle, and the Palpatine's Arrest. Of course, the Palpatine's Arrest was a different variant of Seisin Tin. But yes, um, I think the Shaq T and the Seisin Tin figures look amazing. The Obi-Wan and Anakin are early Clone Wars, so they're not so great. But the aliens really profited from the Clone Wars art style. Now, back over to the Ahsoka Tano cell. As I've already said, the Ahsoka Tano minifigure, pretty darn perfect. Great arm printing... Overall design, the Leku are amazing and are obviously in such a way that they won't have the paint scratched off like the old Shock T, sadly. Then there's Maroc, the Inquisitor, who turned out to be a big ball of gas. All the theories, all the fan theories gave us hope where there was none. Uh, the Ahsoka show, in my opinion, was alright. It was better than most recent Star Wars. Definitely better than the sequel trilogy. Um, Maroc is very, very good. Look, like, is a good-looking figure. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely love it. Another Inquisitor to add to the Imperial ranks, even though um, it, it is a thing to say about um, whether or not he was really actually Inquisitor or just pure Dathomirian magic. But since Maroc was considered was considered quizzed, I'll put him with my Imperial collection rather than with my in between villains, the miscellaneous bin of Star Wars characters. Um, and then we of course have got Hu Yang, who is of course voiced by David Tennant. One of the actors to play the Doctor on Doctor Who. So I have a very, um, very, very much, uh, bias towards liking him. Great design, great little backpack. The set also has a bigger backpack for him with a wrench. It's too bad they couldn't figure out a way to make it so that he could have his two robot arms that sprout out of his back. I'm sure if Lego was given enough time and enough resources, they could come up with a way for him to work proper, look better, better colored. I understand where they went with the color they did, but they could have gone with a better color. But he is voiced by David Tennant. So I can't help but... Then we have Sabine Wren. One of the biggest disappointments about the return to the show. Big, big disappointment. Just so much is wrong. I don't care about the idea of giving force powers to, to um, you know, that anybody can learn to use the force. But, of course, midichlorian count is very important towards such things. 
Um. But really, you gave it to the man, uh, a Mandalorian, someone who's already supposed to be very cool, very skilled, a non force sensitive lightsaber user. It's compelling. Giving her the force out of nowhere to actually be able to push someone like Ezra into a Star Destroyer is not compelling. I would rather just pop that lightsaber off, give her a gun, and put that helmet back on her. Which is saying something, considering my Sabine, even though I have Sabine's helmet. I do not keep the helmet on the old Sabine's. But this new Sabine, I think I might just keep the helmet on her. And have the hair as the swap out one. That's how annoyed I am at the new Sabine. Also, it was very depressing to learn that her entire family was wiped out in the Night of a Thousand Tears. I am... That was a very depressing bit of Star Wars news to learn in the show. <sighs> so my thoughts on the Ahsoka show is... It was a bit messy. But was it good Star Wars? Yes. Yeah, how does the T6 Jedi shuttle from the Ahsoka series compare to the old T6 Jedi shuttle? I like the old T6 Jedi Shuttle more, way more. Much better characters overall. Even if... Either way, either one of these sets, you get four named characters. And Hu Yang would just barely push it out for me to make the Ahsoka set better. Because, like I said, Maroc turned out to be a disappointment. Sabine was effectively, um, had her character assassinated a bit, in my opinion. And also, surviving that lightsaber stab. I've seen, I've, I understand both sides of the argument. People say that, yeah, it makes sense. And other people who are saying, what the f like, just have her have her Mandalorian armor on for that scene. And everything's hunky-dory. <laughs> but no. No, 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 no. <sighs> so, yeah. No, the old T6 Jedi Shuttle is better. I've seen YouTube polls on YouTube saying the same. Old T6 Jedi Shuttle is so much better. Also, um, to uh, prove that I do... In, well, I, I can just spin around real quick. I have the UCS Venator. Right there. Whee! Back to the T6 Jedi Shuttle. I have been forbidden from building the UCS Venator as it is too big. Very much too big. I will be getting the characters out of the UCS Venator in due time, though. I will open the box, dig around in the bags, get the figures... And build them, because I want the new Captain Rex and the Admiral Yularen, very much so. In the meantime, my next review will be the Jurassic Park sets. I will build all of those before we return for the next video. Also, there's another Lego set that got hidden because of the fact that I have too many and I cannot put the wall up any higher. And I needed the wall to be two layers thick. So there is another set hidden behind the Guardian sh the new Guardian ship. 
One that I bought purely because it was cheap and on sale. Also, yes, I went away on another vacation to another second-hand Lego thing. It was actually really cool. Took a lot of cool pictures. Um, and that's where I got the Ecto one. And I got the, uh, the fight on the flying wing at the actual store that was part of hosting the whole event. I need to text the guy I met at that event, get, get in touch, so that I can get even more Lego. Not that I don't have enough. Ugh. I, I'm addicted purely and simple. Anyways, I think this looks like a good place to end off for today's video. So this is the cowardly time lord shining earth and saying have a good day or whatever time it is wherever you are. Bye bye now.